Good evening. Welcome everyone to Grace Lutheran Church for our... Did anyone else hear that? Oh, it's just a light bulb. I thought it was my microphone. Never mind. (laughs) Um, For our Holden evening Wednesday night worship. Um, I just want to extend a greeting to each one of you. Thank you for joining us tonight. I hope it's a restful, prayerful, and rejuvenating time. Um, Let's take a moment, too, to greet all our friends online. Thank you for worshiping with us as well. We're all gathered here together as one church family. Um, There aren't many announcements on these Wednesday nights, uh, other than during confirmation today, I wanted to share with all of you the confirmands in uh, 7th and 8th grade. We talked about the story of the road to Emmaus or the walk to Emmaus, which is um, the theme for the text Pastor Kendall will be preaching on too. Eli remembers. (laughs) Um, So if you want to stop by before you leave tonight, you can see the drawings the confirmands did downstairs where you had dinner or supper. (laughs) There's, still getting used to that. Um, (laughs) There's a large piece of paper where um, the confirmands drew the road to Emmaus and reflected on different things, doing a spiritual practice. So invite you to check that out before you go. There's some really cool drawings. Um, and also a more somber announcement. Um, as we talked about on Sunday, Rodney Anderson um, sadly passed away last weekend. Um, but want to invite all of you to his funeral, which will be tomorrow at 1 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Um, So with that, we'll begin our worship, our Holden Evening Prayer, um, on page two. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. Joyous light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face, you who see creation story, shine on every land. Creator of the universe, 
From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make your darkness bright. For your word and your presence are the light of our pathways. And you are the light and life of all creation. prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. The light shines in the darkness. Good evening, everybody. Providence and Grace, good to be together with you uh, tonight and those that are joining us online as well. Our uh, text for this evening is uh, another post-resurrection story of uh, Jesus, uh, this found in the 24th chapter of Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on the same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and taking with each other, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And Jesus said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? And Jesus asked them, What things? And they replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. And yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, 
Some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. And then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. And as they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them, and when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And then he vanished from their sight. And they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? In that same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. And then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, as I began uh, preparing uh, this uh, sermon, one of my first reactions to this gospel reading for this evening is good for them, right? Good for them. Jesus was known to Cleopas and his companion in the breaking of the bread. Good for them. Good for them. Their hearts burned on the road to Emmaus as Jesus interpreted to them the things about himself and and all of the scriptures. Good for them. Good for them. But what about you? And what about me? What about what about us this evening? How is Jesus being made known to you and to me and to all of us? How is Jesus being made known? Is your heart burning inside of you? Is your heart aroused? Is it kindled? Is your heart on fire? Or are you just experiencing maybe some heartburn from the good dinner that was served uh, downstairs. Good for them, but what is good for us? What is good for me? What is good for you in these texts? What difference is Easter and this resurrected Jesus making in your life? What good is Easter and the resurrected Jesus making Uh, good in your relationships, in your view of the world, in the way that you relate to others in life? What difference does it make to your concerns? What difference does it make to your priorities? Has the empty tomb and the resurrection of Jesus really changed your life and changed your heart? And if so, then how has it changed you? And if not, then why hasn't it? And I want Easter to make a difference in my life. I even want Easter to make a difference in your life. But has it is the question. I want to be able to say, Alleluia, Christ is risen, good for all of us. Good for you and good for for me, not just good for them in the scriptures. I want us to live Easter lives 
And I think today's gospel offers us some instructions for living into this resurrected power that is, I believe, for all of us. So here we are tonight in the middle of Lent, and we have the story that takes place three days after Easter Day. Probably it took place in the afternoon. It was after the resurrection of Jesus, but it was before most people believed or even knew that Easter had actually happened. And we have these two disciples. They aren't well known, but they must have been part of the inner circle, the closest people to Jesus. And these two disciples are leaving Jerusalem where Jesus was tried and where he was crucified. And they started walking to Emmaus. And they are defeated. They are discouraged. They're hopeless. And I imagine that there's something comforting for them just being together, the two of them. And I think we can imagine that when everything you knew or believed just falls apart, having someone just to walk with you in that and to talk with you in that, that is so important. It's something, it's presence, it's a gift. Having someone who shares your sorrows, having someone who shares your hopes, But there was this other presence walking and talking with these two disciples as well. And they didn't recognize that it was Jesus. And it seems kind of incredible, doesn't it, that they wouldn't recognize Jesus after being with him for three years and being part of his ministry? How was it that these two did not recognize Jesus walking and talking with them. Jesus was their good friend. And if you read and imagine the scene, it seems almost funny. I mean, think about it. Jesus approaches them and asks them what they are talking about. And they're talking about him. They can't believe that there is anyone, the scripture tells us, they, these two can't believe that there's anyone in Jerusalem that doesn't know what just happened these last few days. But here's the one guy who does it, they think. And he proves it to them by asking this question to them. Well, what things are you talking about? Seemingly an innocent question. So it's Easter. It's the resurrected Jesus asking this question. It's Easter. And the two disciples don't even know it. So they are on their way to Emmaus. And the risen Jesus, the one they don't believe has been resurrected from the dead, is ironically right there walking and talking with them. But they don't recognize him. And there is this little detail, not just that they don't recognize him, but the scripture, Luke tells us that they were kept from recognizing Jesus. And this very thing turns out to be good for you and good for me and good for us. Because this very thing, this very detail, is a promise to you and to me and to us. Because what it means is that it's entirely possible, and it's even promised that Jesus is with us, that Jesus is walking with us and talking with us, even when we don't always recognize Jesus or feel Jesus or even know it. Jesus comes to these two disciples, and even though they don't recognize him, they talk about, and they have this long conversation as they walk towards Emmaus. 
Jesus does not rush the conversation or short-circuit their grief. He does not tell these two disciples to get over it. You know, move on. Remember that others have it much worse than you do. They don't remind, he doesn't remind these two disciples to look for the silver lining, to suck it up, to seize this opportunity. Jesus doesn't say to these two disciples, you know, my Father will not give you more than what you can actually handle. Jesus doesn't say any of these things that we might say to each other. Even though these two are grieving the death of someone who is alive and who is walking next to them, Jesus lets them talk. And he comes alongside of them. And I hope that we can be as gracious with others and as gracious with ourselves in the same way when discouragement or when disappointment come. I hope we don't close down conversations. Jesus seemed to remind us that sudden losses, whether they are profound or, or even small, these things take time for humans to process. And that's how life is on the road to Emmaus, and that is how life is on all roads. They are talking through devastating facts, their hurts. They are talking through their disappointments. They are rehashing the story, not because the story will change. The story is not going to change, but because they just have to talk about it. And they have to be together. So Jesus just listens to them as they walk along. So this unrecognized Jesus is not in any hurry to reveal himself to them at all. And you know what? You don't have to be in a hurry either to get it all together when disappointments or discouragements come to you in your life. You don't have to figure out faith you don't have to figure out life immediately. You don't have to wrap up your pity party or put up, you know, your grown-up pants, right, as we sometimes say. You don't have to do any of that. Yes, eventually it would be good to do some of those things, but not right away. Jesus gives us the time to talk with us. And Jesus also has the willingness to walk with us even when we don't recognize that it's him with us at all. And that is so good for us. Remember his stories about the sheep and the coin and the son who were lost? So Jesus is searching the house and the horizon and his searching continues until all are found. The risen Christ will not vanish from your side even when it is a long walk, even when you need to do a lot of talking, and maybe even that talking is in circles, and maybe you've taken some missteps, and maybe you have some ugly moments. But Jesus will never desert you or me, and that's good for us. Even when it feels like all is lost, you are never lost to Christ because you are forever in Christ. Eventually, Christ will turn us around. And sometimes that takes a little bit of time. And that's okay. The risen, even unrecognized Christ walks with us. There are miles to go. But eventually the two disciples see that the impossible is true. So good for them. And the text tells us that in the evening, after their long walk to Emmaus, they turn around and they head back to Jerusalem. Their evening return to Jerusalem goes so much faster than their long walk away from 
Jerusalem because sadness is a stroll. Sadness is always a stroll, but joy is an exhilarating ride. It's like being in a Chevy Camaro or maybe a Ford Mustang. Joy is always an exhilarating ride for us. Thankfully, our disappointments and discouragement will only be for a while. Easter joy is forever. Easter is eternal. So Easter has already been secured long before we even become aware of it. So we can take our sweet time allowing Jesus to rekindle our hearts and open our eyes because God will never abandon us on this road. The scripture says their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. But Jesus was with them the whole time. Good for them. And Jesus was teaching them new things. And he was working through them. And he was making them new. Good for them. But it's even more important to trust that even when you don't see God at all, even when you don't recognize Jesus, even when it's the worst possible time in your life, in your heart, is breaking and everything is falling apart, even when it does not feel like Easter for you and it is not well with your soul, that even then he is walking with you and he is talking with you. He is there because he is risen. Good for us. Amen.
An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the Chosen One of God Most High. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God, I live to do your will. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here, and blessed me all my life through. Great and mighty are you, O Holy One, strong is your kindness evermore. How you favor the weak and lowly one, humbling the proud of heart. You have cast the mighty down from their thrones and uplifted the humble of heart. You have filled the hungry with wondrous things and left the wealthy no part. Great and mighty are you, O faithful one, strong is your justice, strong your love. As you promised to Sarah and Abraham, kindness forevermore. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here, and blessed me all my life through. Hold us in love, in peace, in peace, we pray to you. God of mercy, hold us in love, for peace and salvation, we pray to you. God of mercy, hold us in love, for peace between nations, for peace between people. Hold us in love, for we who are gathered to worship and praise you. God of mercy, hold us in love, for all of your servants who live out your gospel. God of mercy, hold us in love. For all those who govern, that justice might guide them. God of mercy, hold us in love. For all those who labor in service to others. God of mercy, hold us in love. Grant weather that nourishes all of creation. God of mercy, hold us in love. Keep watch on our loved ones and keep us from danger. God of mercy, hold us in love. For all the beloved who rest in your mercy. God of mercy. See, hold us in love. Help us, comfort us all of our days. Keep us, hold us, gracious God. And grace.
great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness in life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. May God, creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Amen. And we depart in Christ's peace. Amen.